people may be dismissed. Our new theme for 2012 is you have been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. Why have you been brought to the kingdom? I can go around and I can tell you why some of you have been brought to the kingdom. Some of you are new to the kingdom. Some of you have not been in the kingdom long. But Chuck, you've been brought to the kingdom. You've been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. Yes. Brother Richard, you've been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. The testimonies that you give blesses us. Yeah, you've been brought to for such time as this. Hallelujah. Brother Kenny here has been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. Our witnesser goes around, witnesses at the bus stop, down in the plaza. Hallelujah. Yes. You've been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. For our nursing home ministry. Yes. You've been brought to the kingdom for such a time. As this. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Earl has been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. For the paintings and all the beautiful things that he's yes. done. Yes. The camera work that he does. Yes. Yes, Lord. You have been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. Um, not by accident. That's right. Yes. That's right. You're not here by accident. Yes. You have a purpose. Yes. yes. What purpose do you have? Some of us don't know. But God speaking to your heart, you know you have a purpose. Don't sit on your purpose. Don't sit on your purpose. Get busy. Put feet to your purpose. Because you have been called, brought into the kingdom for such a time as this. We don't have long, people. Jesus is going to be here. I know we've said that for years and years and years. But we've never seen a time such as this. We've never been in a time such as this. Amen. You can feel the presence of the Lord coming closer and closer. Yes. Our time here on earth, people, is short. Use your time wisely. You have been brought into the kingdom for such a time as this. We're going to be in Esther 2. We're going to start with Esther 2. It's right after one of my favorite books, Nehemiah. Jesus, Jesus, just anoint me, Father. Thank you, Anoint Jesus. the words that yes. you have me yes. to speak. Yes. Lord, anoint the hearts and the ears of those that hear this message. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So it was when the king command and decree were heard, and when many young women were gathered at Shushan, the citadel, under the custody of Hagar, the es that Esther also was taken to the king's palace into the care of the custodian of the women. Now the young women pleased him, and so she obtained his favor. He readily gave beauty preparations to her, besides her allowance. Then seven choice maid servants were provided for her, from the king's palace, and he moved her and her maid servants to the best place in the house of the women. Esther had not revealed her people or family, for Mordecai had charged her not to reveal it. 
She was not to let them know that she was a Jewish girl, that her people were Jews. They were a hated people. And they were going to do away with them. But she was brought into the kingdom for such a time as this. In verse 12, it says, Each young woman's turn came to go into the king, Heracerius, after she had completed 12 months' preparation according to the regulations for the women. For thus were the days of their preparation appointed, apportioned, six months with oil of myrrh and six months with perfumes and preparations for beautifying women. Verse 17 the king loved Esther more than all the other women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins. So he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Then the king made a great feast, the feast of Esther, for all his officials and servants, and he proclaimed a holiday in the providences and gave gifts according to the generosity of of a king. Now go to chapter 4. <coughs> Verse 14. For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, Go, gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan, and fast for me. Neither eat nor drink for three days, day or night. My maids and I will fast likewise, and I will go to the king, which is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Are you willing to make that statement, if I perish, I perish. Will you die for the faith? Will you stand and die with Jesus in a place where he has called you? Sometimes God may put you in a place to speak that may put you in jeopardy and will you be brave enough to stand up and say, I am a child of the king. Where do you stand? Are you a child of the king? We need to realize that Esther was in a very dangerous position. She was not allowed to go before the king unless he called her. But it was laid upon her heart that she was to go before the king. Go with me to... to uh, Uh, chapter 5 and verse 2. Verse 5, verse, and chapter 5, verse 2. So it was then when the king saw Queen Esther standing in the court that she found favor in his sight. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. Then Esther went near and touched the top of the scepter. And the king said to her, what do you wish, Queen Esther? What is your request? It shall be given to you up to half of the kingdom. Then Esther, in verse 7, answered and said, My petition and request is this. If I have found favor in the sight of the king, and if it pleases the king to grant my petition and fulfill my request, then let the king come to the banquet, king, which I have prepared for them, and tomorrow I will do as the king has said. Go to verse 29. Oops, not that chapter. 9, go to chapter 9, please. And verse 12. And the king said to Queen 
King Esther, the Jews have killed and destroyed 500 men in Shushan, the citadel, and the ten sons of Haman. What have they done in the rest of the king's providences? Now, what is your petition? It shall be granted to you. Or what is your further request? It shall be done. Esther said, if it pleases the king, let it be granted to the Jews who are in Shushan to be to do again tomorrow according to, de to today's decree. And let Haman's ten sons be hanged on the gallows. Go with me now to verse 29. Then Queen Esther, the daughter, with Mordecai and the Jew, wrote with full authority to confirm the second letter about Purim. And Mordecai sent letters to all the Jews to the 127 providences of the kingdom of Ahasuerus with words of peace and truth to confirm these days of Purim at their appointed time, as Mordecai, the Jew, and Queen Esther had prescribed for them, and as they had decreed for themselves and their descendants concerning matters of their fasting and lamenting. Madison, will you come here, please? But you have been called, you have been brought, you have been chosen for the kingdom. I want you to be aware of how important your place in the kingdom is. You're not just a little bitty nobody. You are a child of the king. Yes. God gave his one and only son to die on a cross that you and I might be saved. Have you shunned that? Have you not accepted the gift that God has given? At such a time as this, right after Christmas, where the birth of Jesus is so prevalent, To be aware that God gave his one and only son yes, yes. that I, that you, might be saved. You're not going to be perfect, but you're going to be forgiven. Amen. Some of you have received the power of the Holy Spirit. Some of you are still seeking. Some of you have no idea what it is. But I'll tell you what, you hang around here a little bit, you're going to find out. That's right, man. That's right. That's something that we're not bashful about. I've told people many, many times, we are P-E-N-T-E-C-O-S-T-A-L. Yes. We are Pentecostal. Proud of the fact that we are Pentecostal Church of God. I don't know where I would be today. Yes. If I did not have the power yes. of the Holy Spirit yes. in my life. Yes. yes. Going through this knee surgery, I went through such a spiritual, spiritual battle that I have not gone through. I don't think I've ever went through that. I've never been depressed a day of my life. But I can't say that now. Because I expected... God to touch that knee and to that immediately I was going to be able to walk like I should. But it didn't happen that way. And I had to go back. And if you've been around me very long, you know to change my mind is like changing an old mule's mind. <laughs> Sometimes you have to use a two before to get my attention. But I've had to realize that it's God's time for yes, such a time as yes, this. Yes, it is. 
A time where I had to have people wait on me. I don't like people waiting on me. I am the kind of person that I'm usually the one that's doing stuff. But I'll tell you what, when you have to have help to put your undergarments on and have to have help to sit down and get up from doing your business, it's kind of humbling. But for such a time as this, I've been called. I can now have compassion for those people who are going through these things. Because I know where it can take us. Sometimes we have to walk in people's paths. Walk in places that we don't want to go. That's true. That's true. To do God's work. But that's where we have to be willing. We have to be just like Queen Esther. If I perish, I perish. That's kind of how I felt when I went to talk to, to Mayor Eisenhower. I didn't know if I was going to be accepted or not because I went unannounced. I just went to the office and told him I wanted to speak to the mayor. What about? And I said, I just want to talk to the mayor. <laughs> well, uh, what about? And I said, I just want to speak to the mayor. What's your name? I said, my name is Mary Ford. And he told me to come into his office, sit down in his desk chair, and we just sat there and talked, had a good conversation. I let him know that we need to have a godly leader in the city of Danville. Yes, yes, amen. We need to have someone that hears from God. Yes. And I'll tell you what, the challenge of this riverboat thing that he's really pushing, he's pushing for this thing. And I really, you know, we just got to keep praying and praying. You know, God parted the Red Sea. He can get rid of that casino boat. Yes. Hallelujah. If he has to, you know, however he has to do it. But it's for such a time as this that we've been called into the kingdom. I want you to turn with me to uh, Ecclesiastes. That's after uh, Proverbs and the Old Testament. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And some of these things you're not going to really like to hear because you don't want to go through these times. <laughs> but to everything, chapter 3, verse 1. But to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant a time to pluck what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to gain and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. People, there is a time for everything. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Hate sin, not the people that sin. Yes. There is a time when we have to change. God has given us message after message after message about he is doing a new thing. 
Are you ready for a new thing? Ready or not, people, here it comes. <laughs> Whether or not you are ready, it's going to come. Yes. And you might as well accept the fact that tradition, and let me tell you, tradition is one of the things that stops a church from growing. Yes, it does. And you have never seen anybody as traditional as this kid. But I know that there are things that I've always done that I can no longer do and allow God to do the new thing. Jesus, Jesus. We've got to step out of our comfort zone. We've talked about that many times. Queen Esther stepped out of her comfort zone and went into an area where she did not know whether the king would have her put to death or not. But it was her time. The new thing that God is doing, we have visions of what we think it is. We have visions of following through what God has spoken to our spirit about doing. And we need you to catch a hold of that vision. Yes, God. Help us, Lord. We cannot do that on our own. That's right. We are a body. We are an army. We work together. Amen. The kids watch a show that says teamwork, teamwork. That's where it comes down to. Working together to further the kingdom. To birth in this new thing. And for you women who have had children, you know birthing is not an easy thing. It's a closest thing to death. They say that a woman can go through. But what a beautiful thing is brought forth. After you go through all the agony and the pain of that, giving birth to that baby, you don't remember that. All you want to do is just hold and cuddle that. That's what we need to do to the new birthing, the birthing of the new thing God's going to be doing. Amen. For we have brought, been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. Lay aside things. I'm going to read some things that will kill a dream or a vision. First one they say is tradition. Honor the past, but don't live there. Fear will kill your dream or your vision. Fear of failure or fear of comparison to others. Don't allow people to intimidate you. I've been there, done that. Allow someone to intimidate me to where I wouldn't do what I knew God wanted me to do because I couldn't do it quite as well as that person. But I've learned that I have my own calling. Yes. I have to walk my walk. Oh, no one else can walk my walk. We cannot fill your shoes. You have been called. You have been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. Stereotype prevents us from making sound Bible-based decisions. Complacency. <laughs> oh, it doesn't matter what we do. Things will never change. We've always done it this way. Well, maybe we have, but we're not anymore. How many times have you heard that? Yeah. Oh, we've always done it this way. How many times have I said, <laughs> we've always done it this way? Oh, my goodness. I can't count how many times I've done that. Jesus. We've been here at Abundant Life 29 years in March. There are things that we have done since the first few months that 
who had been here. But I'll tell you, there's a lot of things that we've done that we did when we first came that we no longer do. Because God has changed the plan. He's changed the course. Are you willing to be in that new birthing? Are you willing to go through some of the pain? Some of the agony? To see what God wants us to do? Fatigue. People get tired. Organizations get tired. The pace slows and vision is lost. Short-term thinking. Make decisions that are good for the long haul. 